Hi, this is Bill from Mala GPR Australia, and I'm going to do a quick video on how to set up the controller app for your Easy Locator core. I'm going to assume that you've watched the previous two videos that I made, which outline how to put a SIM card into the FZA3 for the hotspot capability, and also how to connect your tablet to your uh, Easy Locator core or GX antenna. So I'm in the, Easy Lo uh, the controller app right now, and we can see that the Easy Locator core is connected. We've got two battery symbols, which indicate how much charge the antenna has. And we've got the GPS, what's happening with the GPS here, which is position not used. I've got the GPS turned off at the moment, and also we are indoors. Over here we have uh, the velocity that's currently selected, uh, which is 100 meters per microsecond, which we will talk a little bit about later. On the home screen for the controller app, we have 2D project, which is where we're going to be doing uh, spending most of our time. 3D project, which, you, which will enable you to do a grid-based project. Project manager, which is where all your files are stored. And Marla Vision, which is uh, Marla's proprietary cloud-based processing software, which you can send your files from the controller app to. I'm just going to come up here to the I guess the side menu, and you can see that we've got the start home screen, which is where we just were, measurement, which will take us directly to the measurement page, settings, which will tell us uh, what our settings are for the antenna that we have connected, help and support, and about the tablet, or the app, I should say. Let's go into the settings page now. So here we have at the top our measurement parameters followed by positioning and then followed by display down the bottom of the page. At the top we've got our estimated depth um, and which is number of samples. We can slide this bar by holding the black dot and moving it. This determines our scale on the side of the page in our acquisition screen. This does not make the antenna penetrate any deeper if you drag it to a, a deeper estimated depth. Uh, this is just purely for display reasons, or essentially display scale. Underneath this we have acquisition mode, we've got distance. If we click that you can see that we can also collect or acquire in time or via manual triggering. The encoder type we have selected is the core. Now the encoder is what essentially picks up the movement of the wheel and tells the uh, controller up how far you've actually gone. We can come in here and manage the wheels. We can add or custom calibrate any size wheel that we would like. We can also change to a different cart type, for example, the Rough Terrain Cart Mini. The trace interval in centimeters here is two. Uh, that is saying that it will collect transmit and receive every two centimeters. We can change that. And the reason we would change that would be, for example, if we had a, an extremely long uh, profile that we wanted to collect at a much higher speed, say behind a car, we would, uh, we would, we would amend this to suit that. Underneath, we have automatic zero level. That's turned on. If you turned that off, you could customize your zero level. You can see underneath it has gray, grayed out 30. We could change that. Positioning, we've got none selected here, but we could choose to go for the internal GPS, which comes with every Easy Locator core that has about an accuracy of three to five meters in Australia. Or we could chuck on an RTK external GPS and hook that up via Bluetooth. And we can also select a total station if we had one of those lying about. I've left it on none now because we're indoors and it will not prompt up any um, errors when I go to start a profile. In display settings, you can see that we've chosen the vertical access to be in depth. We could also choose time if we wished. Uh, and here we've got the units in metric, which is how we should have it. And the velocity is in meters per microsecond and it's set to 100 now, which is a good sort of general uh, velocity to start on. I'm going to come back here and we're going to go back home to the start menu and we'll select 2D project. In here we can change the name of the project to be whatever we like 
and we can also change the marker template. You can see here it's got UK, US and Canada. I'm going to quickly change that to Australia. This will change the uh, color code, this will make the color coded markers correct with the Australian standards. I'll click OK. And here we are in the acquisition screen. Now, we've got the depth versus distance at the top of the page. And you can see that even though we did select the depth to be in meters, and we selected it in meters, it's in nanoseconds, which is time at the moment. That will fix itself when we first start and push the first profile. What we're gonna do is I'll start by hitting the record button, and I've just got the core here to the left of me, and I'm just gonna push it off. And it's gonna collect some information, which is great. If I dragged it back, you would see the yellow bar here would come back with me, and that's how I would determine the location of where the GPR is on the ground. You can see also that we've changed over to meters and we've got the depth that I selected back in the settings page. Now, if you look over here on the right, we'll pull out all our menu options and we can start messing about with the data. We've got at the top here, hyperbola fitting. We can move all these menus, if, um, which, uh, which is very handy to get out of the way of what you're actually looking at. If we wanted to fit a hyperbola, we could drag this over here. You can see into, let's say, hi, let's say we had a hyperbola that I had it on there. We can micro adjust by tapping these little uh, arrows up and down. And then we slide the velocity and you'll see that the shape of the hyperbola changes. And as we're doing this, it's, it's changing the velocity. If we're happy with that and it fits perfectly, we can hit the OK mark and you'll see that it changes the velocity down the bottom of the page, it will also change the depth scale. You only really need to mess around with the velocity if you are interested in having an accurate depth. If you only care about your X and Y location on the surface, then velocity is not as important. It's good form to have it correct at all times though. AI, this is interesting. Now, we're uh, inside an office on a suspended slab, so you can imagine the data is not great. And I've selected the AI, and you can see here it has, we've got it turned on, and we've got the score threshold in the middle. The score threshold determines how sensitive the AI is. If I drag this down, you can see that it will start bringing up everything that it believes to be a hyperbola or an anomaly. If I bring it into the center, it will only pick stuff that comes up, which is very confident with, um, which is aligned with what you would see in the data. I say to people, you should just leave this on and then calibrate it as you get, uh, as you use the machine more. And when I say calibrate, I mean adjust the score threshold to be in line with what you're picking, because that is generally, uh, it generally helps to have it just sort of confirming what you have there. It also might pick up stuff that you didn't see, um, which is helpful. Okay, into the filter menu, um, which is gonna help change the look of the data. Now we've got gain, contrast, BG removal, which stands for background removal, and auto gain. Now right now we have auto gain turned on. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn off your gain functionality and it's gonna make it so when you adjust the contrast, it automatically brings up the gain to suit. So if I bring this up, you'll see that it will also turn up time gain. And the reason I know that is because I can see that the deeper data has been made more apparent. If I turn auto gain off, it gives us the option to change gain in relation to contrast. Now gain, simplistically speaking, will increase your ability to see features in de at depth in the data. You can see that if I turn that up, we get more information down. Now, as, as I was saying, this is horrible data as we are in an office, but you get the general idea. I think the auto gain function is fantastic on the controller app, and I tend to use this and let it pick the gain setting for me. If I was in a very complex geological environment, I could choose to customize the gain in contrast, which I probably would. Background removal, will re remove all those horizontal repetitious features. Um, you need to make sure you have this off if you are looking for horizons or um, if, let's say depth of a slab if you were um, if you were looking for that with the uh, antennas. 
I'm gonna get off this now and I'm gonna come down to marker type. Now, as I said before, I might jump down to marker colors first because if we select through the colors, you'll see that they are in line with the Australian standards, um, which is orange being electric, white comms, blue water, yellow gas, and so on. So if you select that marker here that you want to put into the data, it will remember that. So let's say we choose gas. I'll exit off here. I'll come back to marker type. It's already selected the gas one there. We can change it, but I'll just leave it. Let's put a marker in the data. I've found something great. I've put the marker in. I'm trying to identify it as gas, or what I believe to be gas. Now, if I click this marker, you'll see it'll give me a lot of information. It gives me a horizontal output from the side of the marker, illustrating the depth, and it also gives me a vertical uh, line, which indicates the chainage. We can also change at the top here, the ID of the marker. We can put any annotations that we wanted to in here. And we can also micro move it, which is similar to what we can do with the hyperbola fit where you have the arrows that surround it. We can delete it. We can set the depth. Now setting the depth is by far the best way to change the velocity to be the most accurate it can be. If you had a pothole next to a line that you just took and you could measure down to the hyperbola or to the um, anomaly that you're looking at, then you could set the depth here of that known marker, which is fantastic. You can also choose to hyperbola fit off this marker, which is great because it chooses the absolute, it, it, it fits the hyperbola directly to the marker so you don't have to mess around moving it. So that's a great feature there. You can also remove the marker if you're not happy with its location. I'm gonna exit off here and I'm gonna click on the screen and I could continue locating now or I could stop my profile by pushing this stop function here and then I could continue locating. So this is a brief intro to the controller app. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact Marla GPR Australia via email or via phone. And I'll put both those, uh, contact, uh, both those contact information in the description. Thank you very much.